Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have some news on the Unity front. This is a kind of fallout from the ongoing saga. If you don't remember, back on September 12th, Unity set themselves on fire with a new runtime fee. It was going to be retroactively applied to literally every game ever made with the Unity game engine, and to say that the community did not like it would be probably the understatement of 2023. I'm not going to go through that in a ton of detail. I have covered it ad nauseum on the past in the channel, so there is an entire playlist if you want to learn more about the whole runtime fee thing. But a big part Part of that uh, is somewhere in the middle of it. They actually stealth changed their terms of service to make it possible for this to happen. The community really didn't like that. Uh, so what they really wanted was something called a perpetual ELA. So that if you agree to it for the particular version, the license stays with that version, so you can't pull this kind of trickery. Well, the thing is, in kind of response to it, uh, so September 12th, this all started on September 22nd, Mark Witten, the head of the Create Division, basically the Unity team inside of Unity, uh, uh, released a statement. Uh, basically, yeah, they apologized. They screwed this up. They admitted they screwed this up. They made some tweaks to how everything all worked out. Uh, they changed some way that the runtime fee is going to apply, various other things as well. But the key thing here is uh, kind of here that it's going to switch to that this will only apply to the next version of Unity 2024 and beyond. Uh, and then on top of that, we'll make sure you can stay on the terms applicable for the version of the Unity editor we, you are using as long as you keep using that version. This is something, again, we call a perpetual EULA. Well, the reason why we are talking about this yet again today is they finally did that. Yesterday, Unity announced the update to the Unity editor software terms, or the EULA. Uh, and again, here is their release from yesterday. Uh, on September 22nd, Mark Witten shared an open letter, that's what we just looked at a second ago, with the community detailing changes to our runtime fee policy. One critical commitment that we made, we will make sure that you can stay on the terms applicable for the version of the Unity editor you are using, as long as you keep using that version. To follow through with this commitment, we have updated the language to the editor terms based on the feedback from our employees and community. Our goal is to make sure the terms users, uh, Unity users accept state that they can stay on those terms for the named version of Unity they're using, regardless of any changes to the Unity terms thereafter, uh, or afterwards, sorry. Uh, as of today, this update will be added to our GitHub repository and unity.com forward slash legal. We have also made sure to explicitly state that the runtime fee is not in effect unless the game is created with or upgraded to the next major release of Unity, so not that massive overreach of all versions of Unity in the past. So we now have a new updated version of the terms of service available here. We also have the old one for contrast available there. Now, the problem is, here is the new one, here is the old one, can you spot the difference? Because I can't. So I kind of got the programmer side of my brain working here, and here we are. This is the new Terms of Service, this is the old Terms of Service, and let's just go ahead and we will do a compare. So we're going to compare this one to this one. All right, so there we go. So red is the new stuff, green is the old stuff, these are what changed. So we're obviously going to skip over the what's changed section because it's not that exciting. Uh, so here we go. This is the first part of the changed. Provided that you comply with tier eligibility, if Unity updates the software terms, the updated terms, impacting your rights, you may elect to continue to use your current version of the Unity software subject to the prior accepted software terms and terms of service, the prior terms, unless such updated terms are required by law. If you elect to update to a later named version of the Unity software, uh, so I guess that means that small patches don't count here, uh, the most current version of the updated term shall apply and be deemed accepted. Uh, for clarity, the runtime fee does not apply to prior released version C section 2.2. For the avoidance of doubt, it shall not be considered an update to a later named version if you update to another version released within the same named version. For example, 2022.1 to 2022.2. Two, uh, you understand that it is your responsibility to maintain complete records establishing your entitlement to prior terms. Uh, I guess so you have to document the fact that you, which version you are using there. I'm not 100% certain I understand there. So that is the major thing there. And we've got some other updates in place. Let's go and find them. Here we go. So the next update here is the Unity runtime fee as detailed at https colon slash slash unity.com for slash pricing updates. The runtime fee does not apply to any projects created with any prior version of Unity 
Uh, any prior released Unity versions, 2022 LTS, 2021 LTS, 2020 LTS, or any uh, earlier versions, the prior released versions, unless you upgrade a qualifying project, i.e. a game meeting the runtime threshold criteria, uh, to the next major release of the Unity software releasing in 2024, currently referred to as the 2023 LTS. The LTS being long-term support or long-term stable release. Uh, and any further, uh, any future associated betas, evaluation versions, tech streams, or LTS releases for clarity, uh, Unity 2022 LTS will be officially supported at least until May 2025 for pro customers and May 30, 2026 for enterprise customers. For further clarity if you are if you use the prior released version of the unity editor uh the applicable prices and fees i.e subscription slash seat price for such use may change in accordance with the unity terms of service provided however unity will not impose any additional fees runtime fee or a revenue share in addition to the subscription and related costs in effect as set forth in the prior terms for prior release version so what they're saying there is that the subscription costs can increase on you know if you're still using 20 22 LTS and you're doing per seat licensing, they can still increase the seat cost uh, as they always could, uh, but you're not going to get hit with the fees or anything new uh, on top of that. And I think that might be it for the changes. So uh, pretty minor differences, but pretty major impact. I'm curious if you're on the fence, do these two changes make a difference for you? So again, here uh, it's the summary version, as I can tell it again, I am not a lawyer, uh, but it looks like as long as you're using 2022 LTS or it's weird that they specify that because what if you're using L 2022 text stream? which I think actually released after 2022 LTS. So I'm not sure where you are in that scenario, uh, but it will be for 2023 and beyond with that one text stream situation being a, a little confusing. I'm not sure how that would apply. Their terms don't seem to cover that. Uh, and you're also going to get support for 2022 LTS until 2025 for pro and 2026 for enterprise customers. So a lot of people are suggesting, well, what they'll do is just basically cripple it so that, you know, you're going to need it for security patches or whatever, force people into doing the upgrade. Well, it looks like your upgrade window is now officially 2025. So if you are using Unity in an existing project and you are a pro customer, it looks like you have um, until 2025 that you're going to keep getting bug fixes, platform adjustments, so on and so forth. So uh, you're supported version will be supported until then. Uh, and then for enterprise, plus one year there as well. You can, of course, still see subscription price increases. And then the other part here is that you can stick with the terms of the one that you are on uh, as long as you want. So I don't see any major holes in the logic here. This does seem to be pretty much a perpetual EULA. The only question mark I have in reading this is about the 2022 tech stream release. It doesn't seem to be actually covered here uh, explicitly anyway. So I'm curious what you think about that. But otherwise, that is the updates that they have made to their terms of service. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.